Hey y'all, once again, welcome back to the layout. Today I want to take a quick look at how to weather a locomotive. This is an Overland AC6000 in the Union Pacific paint scheme. And I want to take a look at how to fade the paint, how to add some of the peeling lettering effects like you see there in the Union Pacific, the road and dirt grime on the underside of the locomotive, and everything in between. So we're going to take a look at that for the next few minutes. I hope you enjoy, and thanks for watching. So here's our locomotive new out of the box from the factory. You can see it has a great looking paint job. However, we just needed to dirty up a little bit to make it look like it's been out on the road for a while. I wanted to mention before we do any weathering work to the locomotive, if you have some customizations or details to add, or even if you need to add sound, go ahead and do that first so you don't potentially damage the weathering job while you're disassembling or working on the locomotive. Here, for example, I needed to add a PTC antenna, so I'm removing some of the uh, factory antennas to make way for the new one. Um, and that's just a side note, just to make sure you do that before you start your weathering job, if possible. The next thing you need to do before you start weathering is to mask off parts of the locomotive. And that's because usually in real life, the windshields, the number boards, the headlights are continually cleaned so that the crew can see well where they're going. So to do that, I just use blue painters, uh, masking tape, nothing fancy. You can pick up your local hardware store. And I'm just going to eyeball it to cut it into strips and then use vertical cuts to cut it into squares, which are roughly the height and width of the windows. Then for the locomotive uh, windshields on the front of the locomotive, you have two options. You can either remove the windshields and then cut masking tape around them like I'm going to do here and then reinsert them while you weather it or you can cut out a piece and put it on top of the windows and leave it in place. One thing, if you're doing that method, I just wanted to mention it's a little bit hard to get the masking tape around some of the windshield wipers, so that's just something to keep in mind. If you can remove the windows easily like you can here on these Overland engines or scale trains and even the new Athern Genesis locomotives, I would definitely recommend doing it this way. And then you can reinsert it, you just have a better fit. Now for our weathering job, we're going to start with a matte finish. This is a Krylon clear coat. You can see the product number is 1311. And I like to do this before any weathering job, whether it's a car or a locomotive. This just does a couple things. One, it dulls it down. Two, it gets rid of any potential fingerprints or grease that might be on the model from handling it. And three, it also gives the rest of the weathering job a really great surface to adhere to. Some of these paint jobs from the factory can be pretty shiny and other paints or powders might not stick to them too well. So this is a really great way to give your weathering job a nice base that'll last for a long time. Another thing I wanted to mention is I know there might be a little bit of a pushback from using a rattle can for giving it a clear coat and usually I would use an airbrush but this stuff, the stuff that I was using there, the matte finish from testers is incredible. I've had no problems with it. It comes out really fine and I have absolutely no hesitation in using it on my Overland model here and would highly recommend it to anyone. So. That's just my two cents about a clear coat. It's a lot cheaper and easier than anything else I've been able to find. So um, like I said, that's just what I would recommend. So once the dull coat is dried, we're gonna come back and fade down the paint. A lot of times actually the dull coat and matte finish is enough to give the paint a little bit of a worn look. However, this time um, I'm modeling a locomotive which has been around for a while and it's really faded down. So I'm gonna use about a 50% flat white enamel paint with about a 50% paint thinner mix using an airbrush set at 30 PSI to go ahead and fade this locomotive down. And as you can see, the key here is really multiple light coats. Once that's dried, I'm gonna come back and give it another clear coat and let that dry for another hour before continuing with the rest of the airbrush job. With the paint faded and dried and the dull coat dry, we're gonna come back and add a little bit of dirt and road grime on the underside of the locomotive. Again, I'm using an airbrush here with a mix of light brown, dark brown, tan, and black mixed with paint thinner. This time it's about 75% paint or 70% paint to 20, 30, 35% paint thinner. And that just kind of eyeballed it to make sure it's the right consistency. One thing I wanted to mention, however, is to not feel left out if you don't have an airbrush. I know it's not accessible to everybody and everyone's not comfortable using one. So this is something that you could also achieve with weathering powders. Achieving the dulling and fading paint effect is a little bit more difficult, but you could actually do it with paint. Maybe I'll cover that in a future video. But this is absolutely something you can do with weathering powders and you shouldn't be afraid to try it just because you don't have an airbrush. So, uh, like I said, I'm just getting the underframe of the locomotive here coming at it from all the angles. And then we're gonna let this dry, give it a clear coat and come back and add a few more details to the weathering. Next, we're gonna go ahead and detail the locomotive with a little bit of extra weathering. Now already as is, the locomotive looks great with faded paint and a little bit of dirt on the underframe. But these next steps are ones that in my opinion really make it stand out and add a little bit of extra realism. They take a little bit of extra time, but at the end of the day, I think they look a lot better. So here we're gonna mask off 
a little part on the top of the locomotive, and this is pretty common. We're going to add some tread and anti-skid plate. What this is used for is, uh, whether it's delivered by the manufacturer in real life or railroads add it later, it's a, it's a thick, grippy paint that helps um, give personnel who are either walking on the top or slippery surfaces of the locomotive a little bit of better grip and traction. And to do this, we're going to be using ash gray. That's kind of the best color and technique I've found to model this tread paint that they put on there. So usually on GE locomotives, whether it's a Dash 8, a Dash 9, or a Jeevo, there's a walkway along the top that it's painted, and then also on the nose of the locomotive as well. So if the manufacturer of the engine that you're modeling doesn't already have that on the model, this is a quick and easy way to do that. I simply masked off the areas that I wanted to apply it to. And then for here, for this technique, I'm using a little bit of weathering powder to, uh, to apply it onto the locomotive nose and the areas that we've masked. You could also use an airbrush to achieve a lighter effect. And I think paints are a little bit more tricky because um, usually this paint and the material they use is kind of thin and you can still see the undercolor uh, yellow in this case underneath the tread paint. So I gave it a quick clear coat and decided I wanted to add a little bit more, but actually looking back, I shouldn't have done this. It came out a little bit darker than I wanted to, but if you look at the final uh, video of this locomotive when it's done, you'll notice that I actually went back and removed a little bit. And that's just a side note that I wanted to mention as you weather these locomotives. I actually do make a fair amount of mistakes when I weather. I just don't like how something turns out, but I always go back and fix it. And most times I'd say nine out of 10, the, result from fixing it actually looks better than it would have you know if nothing had gone wrong and that's exactly what happened here where i ended up removing it i took just a little bit of paint thinner on a cloth and wiped it off and it actually gave it a really neat textured and pattern effect so that's just something i wanted to mention you know if you do mess up it's okay we all do it and you can usually find a solution to make it look just as good if not better than how you originally intended it to this next step is one of my favorites. It always looks really bad when you first do it, um, but turns out to really create a nice effect. And that's to add a little bit of grime and soot and just uh, overall, you know, weathering to the locomotive shell. And it also highlights some of the details of the shell casting itself. A lot of times these manufacturers go to great lengths to make a detailed shell, but some of that's usually hidden whenever it's one paint color as you don't really get to see the definitions of the doors and a lot of these other panels. However, this technique really puts some soot and grime on the side of the locomotive and helps those details stand out. So that's another benefit to this technique. What I'm using here is just a little bit more of that ash gray. You could also use black or dark brown, but I prefer ash gray. I think it's a good color for the soot and grime here. I'm gonna apply it to the entire surface and then go back and using a damp paper towel, wipe it off. So what I have here is just a regular paper towel and I'm gonna dunk it in the water and then dab that off on a dry paper towel so it's very damp. Um, but you don't want it to be soaking wet or else that could remove all the weathering powder. And the goal here is to remove some of it on the flat surfaces, but then leaving behind some of the residue and some of the powders in the cracks and crevices of the shell itself. Here, usually it's best to remove the handrail since this is an overland locomotive. They're soldered onto the shell itself. If it's a plastic locomotive, it's pretty easy to remove those, and I'd recommend that as it makes it a little bit easier. One side note, which I actually discovered about this technique, is that it's a really great way to darken the air intake grills on the back of the locomotive. Most of the GE, EMD, or any type of diesel electric locomotive has these grills in the back and they really get dirty pretty quick. So usually you would hand paint them or mask them and airbrush them and I found that took a lot of time. And as I was using this technique, I actually found that it's a perfect way to darken these grills and it's a really quick and easy way too. So here you can see I'm just going to paint the uh, weathering powders or brush the weathering powders over the entire surface, including the grills and then use the same technique to remove the existing weathering powders um, from the side of the shell and it leaves the grills dark. And it's a really neat technique that I think saves a lot of time. You don't have to spend the money on an airbrush and masking tape or even paint. For this, you can just use exactly what you already have, the weathering powders and then a paper towel. So it's a really cheap, easy and quick way, um, kind of a hack, so to speak, to darken those grills and make them look good. Here, I just want to show you a sped up video of this process because it shows you the difference in the before and after and how this technique and this effect in particular really adds a lot of realism to the weathering and to the shell of a locomotive. I usually give the water about half an hour to dry and then I come back and clear coat it. If you notice that there are water spots anywhere on the engine, give it a good three to four hours for everything to evaporate and for the shell to dry. 
You then definitely want to clear coat it because weathering powders, like always, will come off with handling if you don't clear coat them. Again, I use the testers 1311 dull coat, which I showed previously in this video. For the last step, we're going to add just a little bit of rust and then some chipped and peeling paint on the lettering. On the bottom left inverter cabinet of the shot here, you can see some of the rust. I use the same technique that I'm showing you with the chipped paint to apply just a little bit of brown around the edges to show the chipped paint and bare metal underneath. And then I'm using a little bit of flat white paint, again with just a regular brush with a fine point, to add a little bit of the chipped paint. And I'm using prototype photos to really base this off of. Once this is done, we'll get everything a quick clear coat, and that'll about wrap up the weathering job. To finish everything off, you'll want to remove the masking tape and then clean the locomotive wheels. Usually with all the weathering and airbrush and clear coats, a little bit of residue will build up on the locomotive wheels and interrupt the electrical connection with the rails. So by cleaning it, you're able to make sure the locomotive has good electrical connection with the rails and runs smoothly. And for that, I like to use isopropyl alcohol on a cloth and just run the wheels over it to make sure all that paint is off. And that should about do it. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of information about how I weather these locomotives and a few tips and tricks as we weather this UP AC6000. So thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.